back, my friends. Statically indeterminate problem number two, but this one with gear ratios. Now, let me start off this video by saying, I'm sorry. Last video, if I confused you, because what did I do? I had phi, which I typically call phi for diameter, okay? Phi equals diameter to me in my head. That's how I learned it in school, right? R equals radius. And then here I am, have a problem with phi equals 25 millimeters, telling you that's the diameter. And then I got another phi over there that's telling you it's angle of twist. And you're like, what are you doing? And I'm sorry, okay? I'll try and use VIA for diameter so I don't confuse you with angle of twist, okay? So we've got a little statically indeterminate angle of twist problem. And what, what, what I said last video, typically that's when I have two things that are between two walls. So I've got a gear that comes out attached to the end of a shaft, and then another gear that's engaging it, right? The teeth are interlocked, another shaft and another wall, okay? How the heck? So the gears and the shafts are constructed of A36 steel. Now remember, whenever they give you a specific material, that's your clue, hey, that's probably a book look -em up value, right? Okay, and I think we're gonna have to do that here. So if 500 newton meters is applied to the gear E, Find the root rotation of gear E, which is this big one down here on the bottom. First things first, let's, do you agree that if this gear twists, since they're interlocked, that that one has to twist in the opposite direction? Let's just look at them head on here, okay? Here's big gear, here's little gear, right? Because this one's a, what, a hundred millimeter radius, and that one's a 50 millimeter radius, right? So if this one twists this way, which way is this one gonna go, right? Because those teeth are interlocked, right? So if this one rotates this way, this one has to rotate this way. Do you agree? Okay. Now, the most important thing is being able to write, remember our compatibility equations, write a compatibility equations for these two gears, okay? Now they're both gonna rotate, right? So can we say phi, for gear E, which is, this is gear E, this is gear F, equals gear F. Is that a true statement? If this one rotates 90 degrees, does that one rotate 90 degrees? The answer is no, okay? So what do we have to do to make that statement right there true, uh, to make it true, to make this fee equal to that fee? Let's think about this for a second, okay? This is a two to one gear ratio. Why do you say that? Because this one's 100 and this one's 50, right? So this one is twice as big as that one. It has twice as many teeth on it as that one does, okay? So think about like this, and this is way I kind of like to do it, okay? Let me get another pin. Is if I take this guy and I say, okay, here he is, right? I'm gonna draw me a line at 12 o'clock. Now I'm gonna rotate this guy. I'm gonna rotate this guy 180 degrees, right? Whoop. So there he goes all the way around to, now he's here, right? He started out up here and now he's down here, right? Well, let's don't rotate at 180, let's just rotate at 90 degrees, okay? Just 90 degrees, so he's here, okay? So if this guy rotates 90 degrees counterclockwise, then this one is gonna rot rotate uh, clockwise. How much is it gonna rotate? Okay, it's see here he is. He started out at 12 o'clock also, but where is he now, okay? Being that this is a two to one gear ratio, this guy, you know, think about the number of teeth between here and there. This one has the same number of teeth, but it's all the way around. It's gonna be here. Okay, if this one rotates 90 degrees, this one up here is gonna rotate 180 degrees, right? So every time this one goes around once, this one goes around twice, okay? So how do I make these two equal to each other? If this one goes around once, then how much does this one need to rotate to equal one time around, right? One time around for that guy. This one has to go two times around to equal the same angle of twist, right, as that guy does. This is super confusing, isn't it, okay? 
Because it's two to one, this one has to go two times as much as that one does to be equal to each other, right? Okay, because this one went 180, this one, this guy here just went 90. So I got to do a two to make him 180 also, right? So this is step one, is coming up with this right here, okay? That is a our first compatibility equation, okay? Now, the biggest mistake I see here is students getting this backwards, this two to one ratio, and putting the two over here, okay? That's not right, is it? Okay, so get that straight in your head. I hope I explained that well. Okay, step number two is draw some free body diagrams. You gotta love a good old free body diagram. Come on, y'all. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw a free body first of this bottom shaft, all right, which is here. Okay, whoop. Wow, that's so good. I should be a Pictionary Pro. And then I'm going to draw this top shaft up here. Okay, there's this guy. All right, now, what's going on on these shafts? So let's put some forces on here. What are we, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Let's talk about this guy here first. This is our applied load or torque, 500 Newton meters, okay? So what is he causing? As this thing goes on here, what is the wall doing? The wall's saying, I resist you, right? And so let's say that that's turning, what, counterclockwise? Then the wall is turning clockwise to resist that. Let's call it TA, okay? Now, is there anything else? Remember, when you're the free body, you just ask yourself, what's the world doing to me? What do I feel, right? Well, I feel this applied torque, but I also feel this gear up here, these teeth are like, intertwined, right? So I want to rotate, but this gear on the top's like, no, you can't, right? And he's pushing back on me. So I feel this kind of force up here from the teeth where it's engaged, right? Now, if I go over to that free body, what does he feel? I'm that guy. What do I feel? Well, I feel that force from the other gear pushing on me in the opposite direction. So if it rotates me that way, then over here at the wall, guess what? Right, I've got, what, what was that called? G, right? I've got a T, G over there, right? So that's the reaction force at the wall. Okay, that's pretty good stuff. Let's see if we can write some equations from these guys now. Okay, let's start with this. Okay, and so this guy is going to be, what are the equations from this going to be? Um, do you agree? Some of the force got to equal zero, right? Some of the moments even. So zero is equal to, let's see, I've got TA, which I drew as a um, clockwise. So I'm going to put negative TA. And then this guy, counterclockwise, plus 500. And then F, what is F? F is rotating me in a negative direction also, isn't it? That was a fly right there. Negative. Um, let's see, F times, F, but F is not a torque. That's a torque, that's a torque, or a moment. That's not a moment. How do we make a force into a moment? Multiply by distance. Oh, that's right. So the distance is 100. Let's just put him into meters. So 0.1 F, okay? So TA is equal to um, 500 minus 0.1 F, okay? So there's equation number one. From this free body, let's get an equation from that free body up there. And that one ought to be pretty easy, right? Because what do we get from this free body? Okay, I get uh, TG, which I drew as a positive. So TG, and then minus what? Force times distance, okay? 0.05F, right? So F is equal to, I'll move this to the other side, and then I'm going to divide this, there's a 1, an invisible 1 in front of here. I'm going to divide a 1 by 0 0.05, and guess how many times that goes in there? 20 times, okay? So F equals 20 TG, all right? Let's take that F, this is our equation number 2, and let's plug it into this one, and what do we get here? We get TA is equal to 
500 minus 0.1 times 20. What is that? 2? Two? 2TG? Two okay. Um, or TA plus 2TG equals to 500. All right. So there's, a, there's an equation that we derived from our free body diagrams with TA and TG in it. Okay, that's super not helpful. Okay, let's see if we can expand this guy now and see if we can't get uh, an equation for this, okay? So phi of E, right, which is the rope, the angle of twist of this shaft here, okay? Two of those is equal to one of that one back there, okay? So I'm gonna do this equation TL over JG, and I'm just going to substitute those things into here, okay? So what am I going to get? T, what's, this, what's the T in this shaft here? Again, what's the T in this shaft here? If I cover this up, what's the torque in this shaft? What's well, TA, isn't it? Okay, so here I'm going to do this. 2 times TA, right? There's T, and then what's L? L is the length of that shaft, which is 1.5 meters, 1.5 meters, divided by JG. Aren't you going to do those and calculate? No, not right now. Okay, and I'll show you why. Because what am I going to have on this side? I have another shaft that is the same diameter, and it's made out of the same material. So on this side of the equation over here, I'm going to have a JG again, and it's the same JG as it is over there. So guess what? Those are just going to divide away, aren't they? But what goes on the top up here? T and L. So T, let's cover it up. What do you got? TG, TG times L, and the length of that shaft is 0.75 meters. Okay. So what does this equation here give me? It gives me 3TA, all right, 2 times 1.5, is equal to 0.75TG. Okay. Well, guess what? There's, there's a, we'll call that equation A, and this is equation B. They both have the same two unknowns in them. What is 0.75 divided into 3? I think it goes... I think it goes four times, doesn't it? So 4TA is equal to TG. Let's substitute that into here, right? So that's going to give me what? Uh, TA. And then for this TG, I'm going to substitute this. So 2 times 4 is 8TAs. Okay. And ATAs plus another one is uh, 9. And so TA equals 500 divided by 9. What is that calculator? How much is that? 500 divided by 9. 55.55. Now what did we just find? We just found the reaction at the wall at A. Okay. Can we find the reaction of the wall at G, that reaction over there? Yeah, I think so, because it's just, uh, TG is just four times what we just found. So times four, 222.22, okay? So all of that, now we know these two reactions at the wall, this one here, is 55.55, and this one over here is 222.22 Newton meters, right? Newton meters, Newton meters, okay? Boy, no, but wait a minute, that's not what they asked me to find. They said find, um, find what? Find the rotation of gear E. So we need to find how much does gear E rotate. Well, if we found the rotation in that shaft right there, I think we'd be there, wouldn't we? Let's try that. Okay, do we know a, 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 an equation 
We're calculating rotation or angle of twist. Yes, we do. Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. And let's do... Doo -doo -doo. Can we get rid of this too? Is that okay? No, wait, I haven't written that down yet. I'm sorry. Rewind. Okay, here we go. Angle phi for gear E is equal to T L over J G. Okay? What's the torque in this section here? Well, the torque is right there. <clears throat> so phi is equal to 55.55 Newton meters. Let's be careful about our units. Let's put everything into meters, okay? Times L, what's the length of that? 1.5 meters, so that's good units. Okay, divided by J, what's J? Uh, you know, there's an equation for J, and remember this is for a solid shaft, because a hollow shaft, hollow shaft would be C to the fourth outer minus C to the fourth inner, right? So let's see, what would that be? That would be pi, over 2 times C, which is the radius, and the diameter is point is, is 25, so the radius would be 12.5 millimeters, but we need that in meters, don't we? So what is that? Point, move the decimal over three decimal places, 0, 1, 2, 5 to the fourth, and that would be meters to the fourth, okay? Careful, right? And then G, what is G? Okay, hold on a minute. All right, we can look up G in the back of our book, okay? For A36 steel, we need to be on the SI table, not on the U.S. customary table, but on the SI table. A36 steel, look it up, 75 GPA, okay? I don't even know what that means. 75 gigapascals, or put three zeros on it, 75,000 megapascals, well that's a Newton over millimeter squared, right? But we want it over meter squared, so we can, instead of mega, we just need plain old pascals, don't we? So that would be 75,000 with mega is six more zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that's gonna be in Newtons over meter squared. That way my Newtons will cancel out, all my meters cancel out, that's way better, right? Okay, so here we go. Let's put that in here. 75, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Don't be afraid of big numbers. Newtons over meter squared. Okay. And so phi is equal to, here we go. We got to divide all this mess out, don't we? Let's see what we get here. 55 point, uh oh, clear. 55.55 times 1.5 equals, um, let's see, that's 83.825. Ah, this is the hardest pen to get off there. 83.325 divided by, Lord have mercy, pi divided by 2 equals times 0.0125 to the fourth equals times 75, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zeros, uh, 28, 76.21, right, which is equal to 83 point, 
three, two, five divided by answer point zero oh, two eight nine seven, and that's radians. Okay, that's in radians. Matter of fact, all these units divided out, right? Everything canceled here, so that leaves me in radians. Okay. Now, what if you wanted to turn that into degrees? Because I don't know, I don't know, I don't have a good feeling for what a radian looks like, right? Could you tell me about degrees? Because I know there's zero and I know there's 45. What, how much is that? Well, let's just convert it right quick. So point zero two eight nine seven radians is to X degrees as, I don't know, what, uh, 100, no. Let's make that pi. Pi radians is to 180 degrees. Let's see, so that number times 180 equals divided by pi equals, and so x is equal to 1.66 degrees, okay? And that is the rotation of gear E, okay? And of course, gear E is going to rotate in a, what, counterclockwise? And there's, people are always asking, like, is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, it depends on your perspective. If you're looking this way at it, it's counterclockwise. But if I'm looking at that end of the shaft, it's clockwise, right? So it's hard to say if it's counterclockwise or clockwise. It depends on what your perspective is. But I can tell you that it rotates 1.66 degrees. All right, that's about a hard a question as you're going to see on a test right there, okay, for torsion. If you can do that, you can do anything I throw at you this semester. Man, I hope that helps. See you on the next video, okay?